Well, hello and welcome to a, another lovely little screencast on grid. Um, grid experiments, things that I was playing with uh, because something caught my attention. And uh, on this little uh, adventure, I came across somebody who was trying to lay out a calendar with grid. And I thought that was a really fascinating idea. Um, so, you know, you have a calendar here, um, such as the one we're looking at, where we have a number of events uh, laid out. And of course, you have multi-day events and it needs to figure out how to stack these things. Now, uh, a number of years ago, uh, I had put together something using bitwise operators. Um, and this idea of laying out uh, events using the bitwise operator is sort of like this uh, slot mechanism to figure out whether or not a particular slot was taken um, in order to pop the event in. And so essentially I would loop through all the events that I had um, in, a, in a JavaScript array and then I would figure out whether or not a particular slot was taken um, and then I would create a sort of a bitwise mask to figure out if I needed to um, move an item uh, down uh, within uh, my week um, so that obviously my events did not overlap um, or if I actually had room. So there was sort of the smart auto layout um, of my events for a week and um, I decided to take a look to see if Grid could actually do that. Now, if somebody has already solved this problem, fantastic. Uh, I'm obviously behind the game, uh, but I felt like doing this fun exercise because that's what I do. That's how I learn. And, uh, and so as you can see, look at this. I've got a calendar, uh, laying out calendar events. Um, uh, we have our days of the week. Um, we have our actual calendar days. And then we have a bunch of events being laid out. Uh, so, you know, uh, the short answer, the TLDR, is that yes, um, we can use Grid to lay out events within a week. Um, so let's take a look at how um, I am ended up implementing this. Uh, so, uh, you know, since we're basing um, our calendar on a per week basis, um, I basically broke it down. So for each week, uh, we have um, a, a wrapper. Um, and obviously, from an HTML perspective, I, I try to take some consideration into this. Um, I would love to um, actually kind of explore this in a little bit more depth to figure out what are the accessibility uh, impl implications of this. Because um, I think the last time I did this, I actually used a um, uh, an actual table where you could sort of navigate between rows uh, and columns to figure out where you are. In this case, I used uh, divs. Um, I, I could have used a table as well. Um, but essentially, I broke it down in that uh, within a week, I've got a, a day. And so I have my day label, um, in which case I could say like, um, you know, January 1st, January 2nd, January 3rd. Um, and uh, that way, somebody with a screen reader could still access the stuff. They're using headings to um, essentially identify the items within that particular day. Um, and so in there, we have the individual events for a particular day. Um, so each event I've labeled uh, with a class of event, um, and then I've indicated whether or not it's the start of the event um, or the end of the event. And the reason for that um, is basically these border radiuses. Because if you have an event that spans over multiple weeks, uh, we essentially want to be able to identify that um, this particular event um, does uh, span multiple uh, week. So in, the, in, the, in this case, we see the interview. Uh, this sort of solid line indicates that this actually started the week before and is falling um, and completing here, whereas this meeting one starts here um, but doesn't end here. It goes on to another week. And so um, anything that starts and ends within a particular week um, gets that particular class. Now, the other thing I wanted to mention uh, is, you know, how do we indicate how many days an event spans. Um, and I've used a span here to say this one spans two days, this one spans one day, this one spans two days, this one spans four days. Um, I probably could have said like data span equals one by default, um, and then um, only specify a data span for anything else. Um, that would have worked as well. Uh, and uh, yeah, so that's the HTML structure. Now, from a CSS perspective, um, some of our, the stuff that I have here, so each week is its own grid. Um, so instead of having sort of one 
big grid for the calendar. Um, each week is a grid, and I did that um, mostly to, uh, I guess, make things a little bit easier. Like I, I haven't done multiple weeks, so I imagine there might be some sort of side effects here if um, uh, I start trying to lay out multiple weeks because the the other sort of key thing here is, is I'm creating auto flow dense. And so um, if I started creating multiple weeks, um, things would possibly flow into little gaps that I don't want them to. So essentially I want each week to um, be aware of itself. Now, um, I'd be curious, uh, I know there is some idea of creating a subgrid whether or not subgrid would actually help in this particular case, I don't know. Um, you know, obviously it doesn't exist anyway, so probably nothing to really concern ourselves about. Um, but I did feel that uh, by using um, the uh, grid for each week, um, it allowed me to keep them self-contained and not run into any sort of weird uh, flow issues. Um, and so what the auto flow dense does is it auto fits the elements in there. So for example, if I uh, remove that from the list, you'll notice how um, things kind of rearrange the way they're not supposed to. And the reason is because um, essentially once it finds an event, so in other words, it laid out class, then it did interview, then it did dinner, um, it will just start tacking them on into the end. So school here um, just went on to the end of this when it found room, meeting when it couldn't find room, tacked onto the end. Um, and so uh, that obviously isn't what we want. So grid auto flow dense, we'll go back and find those open slots in order to fit those elements in. Uh, grid gap um, really just tries to find some gaps in here. Um, my understanding is, is that grid gap will eventually change to just gap. Um, so that gap can be used for flex gap, can also be used for possibly column gap. Um, you know, it turns out gap can be used in a number of different cases. So, uh, but for now, grid gap is what it is, and that's what we get. Now, the next thing uh, that I've done this is because of the fact that my day labels and my events are embedded within uh, these day um, elements. I use display contents uh, for the day, and that basically uh, the browser essentially ignores it within its um, a box layout and uh, that's why for example uh, this color um, doesn't show whereas if we didn't have this we actually run into some uh, less than desirable uh, things where essentially each box is part of the the grid and then the items inside of it um, are no longer part of the uh, the grid layout um, which uh, obviously is not what we want, right? We want to sort of take this whole week under consideration as opposed to each box itself under consideration. So we need support for display contents um, in order for this to work, which right now only works in Chrome if you have experimental features turned on and Firefox. Um, you can check out the can I use for more. Um, it looks like display contents is coming in Safari. Um, but uh, no sign of it for uh, Microsoft Edge at this time. Okay, so uh, moving on, we have our uh, day labels. Basically, I just say the label should always be uh, in the first row. Um, so uh, because these are sequentially, it will automatically lay out each of these in the first row. Once uh, it's filled up that row, it moves on to the next row. So everything automatically um, appears after that. So if I take that out, um, magically everything still works. Why is that? I don't know. I would have thought actually that some of this stuff is probably because of how I have these things organized. Like if I took this event and moved it into day five, yes, that's exactly what I thought would happen. Uh, we get these weird sort of things happening that we don't want. Um, and we go back to adding that back in. Perfect. Um, so yeah, if I take that event here and I move it down here, um, as you can see, everything still lays out the way we want it to uh, with all of our uh, day labels appearing on the first row, which is what we wanted. Um, so yay. Uh, 
Do, 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 do. Um, now, you might be saying, okay, well, you put it on day six. Why does it appear on the third day of the week? Um, and that's actually just because I was a little lazy here. Um, I only put my column starts for days one, two, three, four. Um, I didn't do it for five, six, seven. So because I happened to be on day six, um, it just naturally fitted into the first slot that was available, which is this one. Um, if I actually fix this and do uh, day six, day six, boom. Now it starts on day six and goes to day seven, just like we want it to. Uh, so that's fantastic. Um, magic happens when we do things correctly. Um, okay, so going back to where I was, we've got our day label. Um, so um, our day, day labels are in the first row, fantastic. Um, and just some uh, styling stuff for the other things. Uh, my event end and my event start doing the border radius on either side. And um, back to our uh, days. So each day, I just use nth child. I could have added a class to each day. Um, that would have worked as well. Um, I could have also added it to each event. Um, so originally when I had done this example, um, I had actually created a data day um, attribute, which said what day it was, but that didn't make, it seemed redundant since uh, it's already in the fourth day here. Um, I don't need that actual attribute. Um, and so, yeah, I could just use nth child to do what I needed to do. And then uh, the last piece of information that we need to know is how many days does that event span? Um, so thankfully, we can rely on grid column end, and we could just say span and however many days. Um, this thing does need to be a little bit uh, intelligent when we actually output these events. If you could imagine some back end code or even some front end code creating these events, in here, um, I've specified, uh, for example, this data span should only span four days because there's only uh, four days left in the week. If we actually set this to uh, expand seven, now you'll notice here um, we get this sort of weird gap uh, where it extends beyond the grid, um, and that is because it's actually creating, uh, it, it's expanding uh, over three more cells um, in here, um, and uh, each grid gap that we've declared of 10 pixels each basically creates a 30 pixel uh, total um, for it to stick out. Um, so this does need to be a little bit more uh, sort of intelligent in the sense that um, you would, when outputting this particular event, you need to know how many days left in the week to span to the end um, so you don't get those sort of weird gaps where we go beyond uh, the limits of our uh, particular grid. Um, yeah, so I think that pretty much covers it. So we've, we've got our grid column start, which is just let's start on the particular day of the week it is, and then span however many days um, that event should span to finish off that particular week. Um, and, uh, and yeah, thankfully the grid layout uh, algorithm actually lays out all of our events events the way we wanted to. So for example, if I happen to have multiple meetings, you know, in this particular uh, slot, it's automatically going to try to figure out how to lay those out uh, for me. If I decide that, you know, at this meeting event, um, I've got one here and I move to this day, it's automatically going to figure out um, how to lay those items out in a smart way. Now, in this case, uh, you know, this event actually ends within the week. Uh, now the border radius comes in and we've got our meeting event. Um, and of course this, uh, resizes down quite nicely, uh, which is fantastic. I mean, obviously if I got to mobile, I need to figure out how do I want to handle, um, short things like this. Um, so for example, for, uh, my events, uh, maybe it would be cool to do, um, overflow, um, realize my uh, lips has been a while since I've actually uh, played with that property and I forgot something proper probably ellipses yeah have no idea so in there you could probably play with the idea of uh, how to do text overflow because I've forgotten the CSS property um, and what kind of uh, requirements that might have um, in order for that to work, but whatever it is, that's how you want to do it. 
Um, uh, yeah, so I think I've covered off all the things that I wanted to talk about. Um, I have my pen, so if you feel like hopping on that and forking it and doing whatever you feel like, um, on top of that, fantastic. Of course, great resources. Um, you have uh, one of my favorites, which I didn't have linked up here. Um, CSS Tricks has a good list of all the values and properties. Uh, and of course, Rachel Andrew also has some great resources um, off of uh, her site. I think she has a URL and I wish I could remember it. Um, I probably should have created a link, but I will put this in the notes. I will track down those particular links. Um, so by the time you are listening to this, you will already see those in the description. Um, yeah. So thank you very much for joining me on this uh, little ride through grid. <laughs>